As the Parisian art scene boomed, artists had to try to make a name for themselves in the Parisian art world. For this, it was useful to create a specific identity to stand out in the busy salons. Foreign artists, who had an even harder time gaining recognition in Paris, could um, mirror themselves to their own national tradition. Brussels-born painter Alfred Stevens did just this. After relocating to Paris in 1844, he created a formula in his paintings, uh, to which he adhered in most of his works from his heyday. His paintings depict beautiful women in opulent interiors, typical Parisiennes. Due to the formulaic nature of these works, there are some recurring elements in them, one of which is that of the mirror. Mirrors appear in many of Stephen's works, including some of his best known ones like the Japanese Parisian of 1872 and in the studio of 1888. While these mirrors may simply be read to show the decadent lifestyle of his Parisiennes, there may also be a conscious reference to Stephen's own national tradition. In this talk, I will be examining the prominence of the mirror motif in Alfred Stephen's work through this framework. I will discuss the mirror as, as it appears in Stephen's art and its apparent functions, explain the mirror's role in Flemish art and the way in which Stephen's associated himself with the Flemish tradition. Then I will specifically discuss the convex mirror in Stephen's In the Studio of 1888 and look into the ways his contemporaries associated his work with that of the Flemish primitive painters, questioning whether the mirrors may have been intended as a conscious reference in order for Alfred Stevens to publicly associate himself with his national tradition. Firstly, let's have a look at the ways in which Stevens used the mirror in his work. Where did he paint them? And more importantly, what did they reflect? The mirrors most often seen in Stevens' work reflect the interiors which his typical Parisiens inhabit, Stephen's settings often showed glimpses of different rooms through open doors and windows. The mirrors played a role in this. On a work like The Painter's Studio of 1880, the two mirrors serve simply to show off as much of the room as possible. Stephen's often employed mirrors in his works to show what would otherwise have remained hidden. For example, the mirrors sometimes showed Stephen's women from another angle. They were part of the interior, one of the beautiful things to be admired. He often showed a women, woman from behind in the primary picture, with her face only visible in the mirror. This gave his works a somewhat voyeuristic tinge. A painting like the silver ball shows, serves a double function. Firstly, it depicts a trend from fin de siècle Paris. These mirrored orbs came in vogue around the end of the 19th century, and Stevens did in fact have one in his garden, as shown by this painting by Alfred de Kneif. More important is the way in which this round mirror allowed Stevens to display his technical skills as a painter. Painting the distorted reflection required an excellent understanding of the ways in which reflections worked. Painting this kind of mirror, thusly, also served as a way for Stevens to prove his skill. I will get back to the importance of this. The decorative, technically challenging and revelatory properties of painting mirrors are all justifiable and probable interpretations of their prominence in Stevens' work. However, there might be another, broader reason why he used this motif as often as he did. While the mirror was historically used by painters of many nationalities, think of Parmigianino and Velázquez, a 19th century audience commonly associated them with the works of the Flemish primitives. Think of Robert Campin, Quinta Massais, and, most importantly, Jan van Eyck. These Flemish primitive painters, a name coined in the 19th century, were exceedingly popular at the time. They had an affinity for mirror images in their art, especially convex mirrors. Campan showed such a mirror, for example, in his world triptych, as did Petrus Christus in his Saint Eligius in his workshop. Quintin Massey's Money Changer and his wife, which has been, have been on show in the Louvre since 1806, um, also displayed a con small convex mirror in the foreground. Stevens admired Massey's greatly and would have been able to see this work. And of course, the iconic convex mirror in the Arnofini portrait by Jan van Eyck sparked a trend in both interior design and the visual arts after be being on show in the National Gallery from 1834. The mirrors were used by the Flemish primitives to display something that would have otherwise remained invisible to the viewer, just like Stevens did. They were praised for their realism and attention to detail, and the mirror allowed for even more intricate details. Stevens made a conscious effort to be considered like the Flemish painters. Ever since the growing influence of nationalism had made, had made it more important for painters to be considered adherent to their own national school. After coming to Paris at the first Exposition Universelle of 1855, he exhibited some works that were considered too French by his contemporaries. Stevens was a Fleming and was expected to paint like one. Following this criticism, Stevens changed his tune 
and developed the formula of genre painting. Genre was considered a typical northern kind of painting. By painting the elegant Parisian women in their opulent interiors, he combined the conventions of his own national tradition with the modernity so lauded by the art world. In 1886, he published a collection of aphorisms on painting titled Impression sur la peinture, in which his appreciation of the Dutch and Flemish masters plays a big part. He sings the praises of their te technical quality and overall skill in many of his aphorisms, like Rubens was detrimental to the Flemish school and Van Eyck was always its benefactor. A fleck of light placed on an ornament by a Dutch or Flemish master is more than skill of the brush, it's a touch of spirit. And the Flemish and the Dutch painters are the best in the world. In the book, Steven specifically empathized the technical skill in art and the technical skill of the old masters. Thereby, he explained how much he cared about the technical qualities of a work of art, directing the critics to look at those qualities in his own works. As Impression sur la peinture was widely available, he solidified his position to the art world at large, as well as announced his opinions on the art he was associated with. Though, as explained, mirrors appear in many of Steven's works, I want to focus on one work in particular, in the studio of 1888, shown at the start of this talk resides in a Metropolitan Museum in New York and shows three women sitting on a couch. One is obviously painting one of the others. On the wall behind them, which is covered with framed pictures, fans and other knickknacks, hangs a small convex mirror. The mirror reflects the other half of the room, which is revealed to be quite simple and somber, with bare walls and a large heater. Let's discuss the mirror in In the Studio through the framework of the artistic national tradition. Due to the discussed association the public might have had with the convex mirror and the Flemish primitive painters, its presence in this work might be a conscious reference to their works. As discussed, Stevens consciously wanted to be associated with these painters. In his mirror, he shows the reality of the artist's studio, something that would have, been, would have remained hidden to the viewer if he hadn't shown it to them through the mirror. The way in which he shows the invisible is reminiscent of the way the Pl Flemish primitive painters used their convex mirrors. Yet there is no human activity in his mirror, as there is in many of the Flemish primitive works. He must have consciously removed himself from the work. He should have shown up in this mirror, as shown in the dramatic recreation seen on the screen. He also should have showed up in the work shown earlier, the silver ball. But he doesn't. He has removed himself from the work. Well, Van Eyck is th commonly thought to be present in the Arnolfini portrait as one of the men in the mirror. Stevens isn't visually present in this painting. Or is he? Jan van Eyck famously signed the Arnolfini portrait with the words Johannes van Eyck Fuithiek 1434 on the wall next to the convex mirror. Stevens didn't sign his work in as literal a way, but he is actually extremely present in this painting. Many of the works surrounding the convex mirror are his own easily identifiable paintings. Although he isn't visually present in the work, he subtly painted himself into his own painting. This isn't the first time Saves has referenced his own connection to the Fle Flemish masters in the painting of the artist's studio. In In the Studio of 1869, a Breugel work can be seen on the background. Considering this, it becomes even more likely that the, that the mirror in, in the studio of 1888 is also intended as a conscious reference. It may also be telling that both of these works are depictions of the artist's studio, thereby com specifically linking the artistic practice to the national tradition. However, there is one big difference between the mirrors in Steven's work and those of the Flemish primitives. While mirrors in art were commonly associated with themes like greed or vanitas, Stephen's mirrors don't seem to serve that function. Instead, they are simply portrayed as fashionable objects in the Parisian interiors. The modern notions of the mirror have de thereby replaced the traditional ones. If there is a deeper meaning to them, it's this reference to the past, not to any kind of inter iconographical interpretation. The tradition is the message. In this way, Stephen's looked at the past while staying completely grounded in the modern Paris in which he lived. While other artists did feature mirrors in their works, Edouard Manet, for example, famously painted a mirror in his bar at the Folie Bergère to show something otherwise invisible to the viewer. However, genre paintings by French artists wouldn't be associated with the Flemish tradition in the same way that those of Belgian artists did. For Belgian artists like Alfred Stevens, the national tradition informed the reception of their work, not the other way around. This is proven by the comparison between the reception of genre paintings of French and Belgian artists. Whereas French genre was seen as low kind of art and a sort of kitsch, 
Belgian artists were lauded for making very similar works just because they were supposedly painting in their own national tradition. The reception of Steven's works proves that he was always closely associated with the Flemish and the Dutch masters. The, his references were clearly picked up on because his uh, reception and the criticisms of his work were always closely linked with artists like Vermeer and Ter Borch in the case of his genre paintings and of course the Flemish primitives in the case of his attention to detail and technical skill. Especially Toré Burger mentioned this connection in many of his texts on Stevens, calling him a brilliant resurgence of Metsu or Ter Borch in his Salons of 1867. Also, Count Robert de Montesquieu wrote a long essay on Alfred Stevens in the Gazette des Beaux-Arts, in, w and in which he specifically called Stevens the son of Van Eyck because of the use of the mirror in his works. The Count of Montesquieu owned Steve Stevens' painting La Psyche. He explained how Stevens liked to use mirrors on smaller size paintings to create an infinity of reflections in a cramped surface. Contemporary comparison between Stevens and the old masters was mostly based, mostly based on two things, his affinity for genre painting and his great technical skill. His own remarks on the nature of northern art suggest that he may indeed have referenced these works in his own production. The mirror motif was useful for both subject matter and execution. In subject matter, it was a natural ornament in his in Parisian interiors. The association with the old masters is not the entire point. In the technical sense, the mirrors show off his Flemish skill, especially when those mirrors are rounded. The copious mirrors in the works of Alfred Stevens can be interpreted in many ways. They may just reflect the modernity and the rich lives of the women he painted, or they may have served as a, as a way to show off his technical skill. However, they may also be read as a conscious reference to his own national tradition. In this talk, I have attempted to explain how Stevens associated himself with the northern and especially Flemish tradition in art by painting mirrors in many of his works to portray himself as a specifically Belgian artist and how he in this way placed himself firmly in his own national tradition. In that way, the mirror reflects both modernity and tradition.